Welcome to the Balfour channel. That's alpha with a B because this is B grade alpha. Nothing you hear on this channel should be taken as financial advice because I am not a financial advisor. All right guys, in this video, I'll be covering the intersection of music as an industry and how NFTs and Web3 play a pivotal role at enhancing the relationship between artist and fan. Most importantly, I will share the companies and projects I believe are best positioned to capitalize on the new business model. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video so you capture maximum value from this content. And as usual, if you like this video, be sure to lick the like button, stimulate the subscribe area, and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. That helps my channel grow and I greatly appreciate it. Also, I have another video in the works that's music industry related that you're not gonna wanna miss. So make sure to subscribe with the notifications on. The music industry as a whole has had many restructuring events since the beginning of its time. The once plentiful revenue and sales generated from vinyl records to cassette tapes, CDs, and finally MP3s is now largely a thing of the past. What worked yesterday might not work tomorrow, and in the fickle music business, companies operating here are hyper aware. Video killed the radio star, and Napster killed them all. File sharing altered the distribution of music forever. I believe it is time for yet another seismic shift in the entertainment industry to take place and for good reason. Let me explain. In order to coherently speculate where the industry is going, we must first objectively identify where it is. It's safe to say the music industry today is a convoluted, steamy pile of hot garbage. Remnants from the glory days of the 1980s are still prevalent, siphoning massive value from artists through predatory record deals, strict touring schedules, merchandise rights, and everything in between. There's a middleman every step of the way waiting in the dark to collect his 90 cents from every dollar. Yeah, hey, man. Who work for who? There's already a ton of really good content available outlining in detail the various ways in which artists and musicians get shafted by record labels. And I will link in the description some good videos for people wanting to learn more about the intricacies of these scams. But for the sake of this video and to keep things short, we will accept the following statement as fact. The music industry is a convoluted, steamy pile of hot garbage with so many inconsistencies corrupt dealings and power dynamics being heavily skewed in the favor of the few, it's obvious this industry is primed for a facelift and serious change for the better. So what can be done about the complex issues the music industry faces? Glad you asked. In the case of upcoming artists being taken advantage of and signing predatory record deals, I fear there is very little to be done. Educating artists on the importance of owning rights to masters and teaching them the complexities of legal contract is not a realistic goal, in my opinion. After all, they are musicians, not contract lawyers. Record labels will continue to leverage their image and sell their influence so long as people continue to fetishize wealth and status. Artists will remain susceptible to these deceptive tactics and terrible deals will continue to be made. Until, of course, there is a clear path forward and other options for them to take. If there is a viable alternative for musicians to reach their fans and monetize their work, surely over time, they will naturally choose the best option that suits them. Enter thought leaders and builders of Web3. Until very recently, there has been no viable alternative for existing and upcoming artists to bring their music to market. Not anymore. The days of limited options are slowly coming to an end. Companies like Royal.io have taken the first steps in evolving the relationship between fan and artists. They've enabled fans to easily purchase NFTs from their favorite artists. In addition, they've paved the way for artists to raise capital directly from their fans instead of the questionable record labels. Funds raised from the sale of the NFT can be viewed as seed capital or even a signing bonus that traditionally would only come from a record deal. These funds can help rising stars bootstrap cash and provide them the financial runway needed for their careers to take off. It gets more interesting than just the crowdsourcing aspect of what this might um, imply. Nas, Eminem, Chainsmokers, Diplo, and other notable artists have already done NFT drops through the Royal.io website. These artists have agreed to share royalty income generated from a song or album they created. This is being facilitated by the sale of the NFT. Each NFT represents a previously specified percentage ownership of the song or album's earning potential, 
meaning whatever revenue is generated from streaming or royalty payments gets shared with the holders of the NFT. This effectively turns the fan and collector into a pseudo record label, simultaneously allowing the artist to raise funds quickly from the sale of the NFT drop. This form of aligned incentives between artist and fan has never happened before and the implications are massive. This is a big deal. The exact details of each drop vary from artist to artist and can be structured however they see fit. For instance, Nas decided to offer only half the revenue generated from just two of his songs, whereas the Chainsmokers decided to share all of the royalty revenue from an entire album. The artist can sweeten the deal with meet and greets, VIP experiences, and even merchandise. We cannot overlook or overstate the importance of artists having options. The artists themselves have full executive power to decide what terms are fair and reasonable. Not some shady dirt bags in a boardroom looking to lock people's creative talent in a box they control. The size and influence of the artist will likely play a role when deciding to share royalty revenue with fans or not. For instance, a more established artist like Nas or Eminem has already amassed a huge fan base, so when they drop music, it's 100% going to earn them revenues. There is no shortage of people willing to stream and consume their music, and for this reason, they have more leverage. An established artist might have different incentives to do a drop. It doesn't have to be strictly financial. Hear me out. You can do some rough napkin math and realize that even though they raise money on the sale of the NFT and earn a royalty payment on the secondary sales of the NFT, that cash amount may not exceed the streaming payments from the song itself. So it's possible for it to become a net wash from a dollar value perspective. So why would an artist even drop an NFT if it's not clear whether that they will make more or less money over time? This question is more obvious for the cash strapped upcoming artists that could greatly benefit from a cash advance, but less clear when trying to understand why existing artists might do a drop. That's where the proposition gets more interesting. Pure speculation on my part, for an established artist like Nas, it's possible they are taking part in these drops in an attempt to trailblaze and prove out the concept for the next generation. It's also possible their own experience with leaving money on the table in previous deals has been a motivating factor. It could be that Nas has seen the light, so to speak, and like other trends, is hopping out in front of it. There's a ton of potential reasons why an artist might opt for sharing the upside of the music directly with his or her fans but a clear benefit is the fact they can effectively align their incentives with potentially thousands of their fans. Nas has a well-known business acumen, has proven to be a very savvy investor and entrepreneur. It's not uncommon for, for highly successful people to be motivated by things other than money after reaching the heights of their career. Like I said, that's pure speculation, but it's my belief that Nas wants to move the industry forward and is using his actions as a guiding light for the entire industry. It's clear to me this type of arrangement is where the future is headed. I put my money where my mouth is and purchase multiple Nas NFTs. In doing so, I now have royalty rights from the song Rare. Honestly, it's just dope being able to say that. Myself, along with a thousand or so other holders of the NFT, will be receiving our first payout after waiting six months from the launch date of the NFT release. Payments are expected to go through Royal.io website and be made available in USDC for direct deposit by the end of the month. So I'm super stoked for that. My portion of the NFTs represents 0.026% of the revenue generated from the song. I'm not expecting much of a payment, but we'll see. And for, I will for sure update this video in the description with the amount earned. So stay tuned for that and check back if you're curious to see what I've earned. One thing I'll say, and I'd like to point out is whatever money I do earn from my portion of the royalty payments will be truly passive income, as passive as it gets. And who knows, maybe the song will get a feature in a film or a TV series and revenue will get a big jump. A lot of people throw the idea of passive income around, you know, oh, I earn passive income doing this, I earn passive income doing that. And, I, and I'll be the first to tell you, passive income is truly hard to come by. So whatever I do earn, I consider it a huge win. Not to mention, I'm, I'm also a huge fan of Nas. So holding an NFT by Nas and Royal.io, like it's just a win in my book. I, w I, I love holding it and I plan to keep those NFTs for a long time, for a very long time into the future. 
that is it for this video. I encourage everyone who sees this video to look into royal.io. And as always, Christian Dior. Christian, do your own research. I'll, I'll link the Discord for those of you interested. Check the description down below. In my opinion, it's definitely a good time to be looking into projects like this while the markets are cooling off and panic buying seems to have chilled out for the time being. It's my opinion that a lot of real, actual value is being thrown out with the bear market bathwater and the gems are just waiting to be found. And as always, appreciate you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.